So last talk before we uh, conclude the plenaries and go on to the panel. This is a reflection and many of the things that I will be talking about you have already heard today. Uh, what this is about is we in the University of Nebraska and also Kevin, who is doing the uh, video today, has uh, done a lot of interviews. I have done a lot of video interviews, uh, interviews, and several of you volunteered to talk to us, and we gathered what we heard from you all. So thank you very much for participating. If you have not participated yet, you can join and participate in chaos or talk to us at a different point in time. So this is what we have heard. This is not the chaos opinion. We are just reflecting on, you know, what uh, you all are saying. And so you may not agree with every statement that we are giving you today. And I invite you to reflect on does this resonate or not, and why or why not, and so that we can move on in the conversation. Once we establish a baseline on where we are, we can move on and build from there. I want to focus on three questions. One is, how are we all using metrics right now? What is the status quo? Then, how do, would we like to use metrics? Where do we want to go? And lastly, what are the concerns on getting there? In the interviews, we have a lot more, but I'm going to focus it because we only have 20 minutes. As I walk through with you all, through the uh, through the answers that we have come, it's only a subsection of everything we've heard. The things that have we heard the most or that we found worthy sharing today. And if you want to discuss them immediately, we can. I'm prepared to not get through all the slides, that's fine. And I'm this is for the conversation of this chaos. So how will, how are we currently using metrics? One is, we hear a lot that we are just starting the conversation on how to actually use metrics. It's uh, one year, two years in on uh, figuring out within the company, within all sorts of projects, what metrics should we be looking at, how we should we be using them, what actions should we do, because now we have metrics. Uh, so we heard earlier today we are just picking the low hanging fruits right now. We also know that uh, we look at the tools and then just start using the metrics that the tools provide and that kind of constrains what we're looking at right now. I can wait if anyone has something they want to add or say feel free to raise your hand at any time. We are also hearing that you want to have metrics to influence organizational decisions. This is from an open source project perspective that you want to attract more users, more companies coming in, more contributors. From an organizational perspective, you want to show that we can use this project, this is a good project to rely on, to use in our own products, or this is something where it's worthy investing our time and effort. We heard earlier today the idea of tracking the organizational diversity, which is often done through private lists that we maintain ourselves. And that's one of the things we do today. We also um, look at open source projects and try to figure out is this a good quality project based on is the README high quality? Is the documentation high quality? How is it, is it to set it up and get started on the project? So that's one of the things we look at right now. Is there a question? Yes. It's kind of open for people, but on that first one, are a lot of people using metrics right now as a way to influence project decisions or within the organization? Can I 
answer from our perspective, like that's a big driver for us to look at. So I mean, obviously, I am one human being. We have other human beings that help me. They raise our resident smart guy, but for the most part, you know, what we're looking at is we, we have to very carefully prioritize the data sets we offer. So what we're looking at is what are the data sets our users are currently using? And, and obviously, you know, places like this, we have discussions with users and hear from them. But I can say that metrics are a huge way for us to prioritize. Through the projects we're going to take on next, and then turn around justifying that internally to say, here's why we're taking these on next, and here's why we need support to continue to take them on. Do you have a tendency to Options for like whether or not they're going to take out any depth, particularly in like the web context of communication metrics and that is a decision that one of the factors we can see. Yeah, so I'm on it. Yeah, so I have such a to this sort of work and take a three year old to this score. So just like with the dependency side, you're you're taking out debt. And a lot of folks just look at you know that's not like you can pay, that isn't necessarily what's healthy for you. So we want to be able to provide account right now. Okay, you can do this, but here's some, here's potentially some other responsibilities in using this project that you may not be doing. So in each of these cases, is it pretty formalized in terms of the metrics that you use to make the argument for your company? Is it always the same set, or is it somewhat unique to the? You know, I hear the things that you're talking about, right? Is it, is it the same checklist? Yeah, it's a Python term for me. Um, I mean, there are exceptions. So we saw folks who depend on some very uh, tanker sold jQuery stuff because they just have to do it. Um, so, but it's going to be known as an exception. But the advantage to this exception, they pour it out on a quarterly basis. We're going to treat it like essentially a threat. Because um, if you can't do it, you need to accept this risk. Maybe security officers or technical leaders may not want to do that. Um, so what it helps to do is to create some responsibility inside that organization that they have to be responsible for their entire technical debt. I'd say like it varies widely depending on the community, right? So the appetite for risk within the JGM side of the house is very different than say the JavaScript side of the house. So um, it depends widely on who the stakeholders are. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate the dialogue that you're having here. Another thing that we do with health metrics is we are not so much interested in point in time analysis. Ben showed this really nice just now how we look at metrics over time. And that seems to be more telling or just more interesting to understanding the health of the project. But then also there's still a lot of uncertainty on what metrics should we be using, how should we be interpreting them, how should we be displaying them, and there's still a lot of discussion we need to have on the metric side. So we just summarized it here with uh, we don't know how to use metrics. Um, everyone is trying their best to make it happen and that's why we have chaos to try to uh, Provide some answers. I'm sorry, I have to change it again. Yes, sure. Let's just be brief. Let's raise a lot of questions. So, for so the people that have spoke that didn't respond to about the data metrics that we kind of tried to use for, there were three people that are there other people that are, are being presented with metrics and really don't know? On this last point, like, what to do with them? I mean, would it be useful to develop some use cases as to how other organizations? It may not be metric yeah, I'm just thinking out loud here. I mean, if we're hearing that uh, I'm going to use them, I don't even know what metrics to look for. Okay. Our company oh, has little items. Yeah. So we're even more fun. Like a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I think having having example usage dashboards um, with a story attached to it, like. How do I actually use this? Not just say, yeah, here's a dashboard, here's all these metrics, but actually finding the value and creating information based out of those metrics to kind of have like a like storyline for you to follow. Yeah, like here's what you can.
sent to your your uh, project managers, to you can go to the executives uh, based on these metrics. So having some examples like that, I think, would be very helpful, very useful. And having specifics surrounding um, use cases really overarching project tool. If we can right now we have metrics and everybody's using them on my team. We're doing it real ad hoc and on a project by project basis. Like within a team that has like five projects, all of them are like, oh okay, we, we did a thing we're measuring it, it's getting better. Um, <laughs> and so just having those use cases for you've taken steps one and two and like here's step five so you can kind of start to infer. Um, well, I was just going to share, we have like a big dashboard that has a lot of information and we show it to the team members and it just gets overwhelmed like your first, that your first slide where it's like, which is great, I think that's something we've experienced and, and also like figure out what the problem is, like to have metrics and like a sample problem that might be solved, it can cover from people a lot because they can say, yes, that's almost like what I'm trying to say, but here's the tweak I can need and so we're having to step back and figure out what those problems are so that we can Seems to me that you need some kind of a persona as well to try to solve the problem. So I start with the question and then walk through the statistical metric that we collected and show them say that you can make this interpretation or that other interpretation. And where there's a gap, maybe you need to go get some help. So at least it forces the thinking process. Uh, otherwise, you can just go to numbers and just where do I start? So I think the persona idea. Seems to be, or a role based thing, perhaps. I do like both, but persona seems to be uh, more, more useful. So I want to do this, so where do I start? And what are the things I can look at? And what could be missing? And who can I ask for more help or something? So kind of like a one on one for a beginner. So it's a bit more important. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Now we move on to some of the things we just mentioned on. How would we like to use these metrics? And we want ideally everyone to have an easy time looking at an open source project, looking at their metrics, and figure out is this a healthy project or not? And what we have right now is that as uh, someone who has been in open source for 10, 20 years, you might get a sense for how a community is doing. But we are also growing the open source ecosystem at a fast rate. So putting some of this knowledge into metrics and standardizing it will help all those new people coming into open source to also be able to get a sense for how a community or a project is doing. Ideally, Chaos would provide a ready off the shelf set of metrics that you can just plug in your project and you get these standard metrics. And then we want these metrics to be defined in a very rigorous way. There are lots of people doing metrics and we would like the chaos metrics to have the highest bar, the highest standard for uh, understanding how they're built and what they mean and how we use them so that uh, as we compare with other people who do metrics, we can always uh, that we have the, um, the the ones that are the most useful and meaningful. So yes, I think it's good. I mean, the thing to be prepared for is the uncomfortable discussions. I mean, any metric is going to start telling you something, and there are people within the open organization that are probably going to be very uncomfortable with those findings. And I think that is often one of the key reasons people try to shy away from objective measures. I think it's I mean, I see this a lot with Linux Foundation and security. They, they like to acknowledge the NPD, but they want to keep it over there. Um, but it is something that is key to every decision that I make. Is that healthy? Uh, we have to be prepared to have the uncomfortable discussions. When did projects go to the attic? How was that approach? Why did we do it? We can take it out, but all of that kind of stuff has to be taken seriously. Five minutes. Five minutes? Okay. I have a question on the left. <coughs> people 
I don't just be questions. So on the, the methods approach, a lot of what's been talked about today has been building metrics for tracing that. So GitHub, uh, or whatever. How many of you actually develop metrics in other ways? That are through, through interviews, through site visits? There's a lot that we miss just by using trace data. So on that last one, developing the method by which you can collect the data that's not available from digital traces. Is anybody doing it? Are you kind of interested in it? So one of the metrics that we're trying to track right now is that it's not necessarily targeted towards project count, but your engagement from a from a, a organization perspective. So we're tracking uh, the number of talks and presentations and things like that that people um, will go out to events. So we're tracking CFPs, we're tracking um, acceptance rate, and we're tracking talks actually given. Um, but we have to do that manually because there's no central repository for it. Um, so of course we, we utilize tools that are readily available, usually using Excel and things like that, Google Sheets. Um, and it would be great if we could just feed that into, uh, into the dashboard as well. So, I don't think there's anything that says that the board has to be tested for a lot of these things. You can also download the slides from the uh, website, and I'm happy to continue the conversation on our weekly calls. So if you want to pick out any of these statements and talk about them on uh, Tuesdays, any of the Tuesdays that we have coming up, that would be great. I see a lot of nodding heads. Did anybody want to comment on that or do anything? On this last one? Yeah, I think the, uh, the, the second point there is very, very true. Um, I think you want to make sure it's easy to understand. That's, that's a really high priority task. The definition needs to be simple, needs to be simple to communicate to others as well. It might be that I understand it, but I need to communicate that with others as well. The reason why I'm using a specific metric. The, the value of actually tracking that metric. So this goes back to my, my previous uh, comment that we need to have that. I think it would be useful if we have like a storyline we can follow. This is why this is important. Just the one comment to add to that is the second one as well. It's cool. And something to the pandemic is what to say. Um, I, I think we may need also to have some caveat to that to say, what about you know, uh, 
business case behind this talk, and justify the business case of the definition of metric perspective. Uh, you know, this is the definition of metrics from a business case. But right now, we're talking about the academic definition. So, how do I marry the academic definition to a business case or you know, scenario so that the guys who maybe aim for the money can also understand from their legal perspective what this actually means? Uh, so, I think that's useful. So, I, I don't want to take time away from the panel, and we'd love to continue the conversation, but I'm going to go to the end, and just food for thought, one minute. As you're looking um, to compare metrics over time, and that is something different than if we start preparing health reports on the communities and interpret them and create those health reports and compare those over time, which then become a journal of the history of the project. Uh, another thing that we can, but it becomes this knowledge base of what to do, what not to do. We also can look at uh, corporate diversity, which is very different from contributor diversity, and this is something that we hear very much people are interested in both, but we have to make sure in our conversation to keep those two somehow separate. And then we want to make sure we have those user stories, use cases uh, for the stakeholders, and have question-driven metrics. This is my last slide. I encourage you all to continue with the conversation on the chaos calls that we have. If you want. If you cannot make it or just want to talk to Kevin or I uh, in private and you don't want to share it in public, just anonymous, that's fine too. Another thing that I didn't put up here because we just decided tomorrow we will have a chaos hackathon. We have a table at the open source summit. At 11 o'clock, the diversity and inclusion report group is meeting. I don't know if the uh, growth mature decline group has a time set up? 540. 5.40 in the afternoon for growth, mature, and decline. So there's a table. We'll send out the information on the mailing list. If you haven't seen their important notifications to sign up for the mailing list. And that's it. Time for the panel. Thank you very much. Everyone.